It's been a secret. I have not been able to talk about this trip leading up to it. So everybody is signing the NDAs for the thing that we're not supposed to talk about. It's to see the new Microsoft Flight Sim. I'm very excited about that. This is the first entry into the market for Microsoft for like 15 years. And they were the leader in home flight sims as far as I know, forever. Oh my god, there it is. And then they just kind of got out of it. Nothing really changed for a really, really long time in flight sim. So I'm excited to be able to share my opinion as a real pilot about the new flight sim. I'm one of the few people that are getting to check it out pre-release, so that's pretty exciting. The way they put it, you can do VFR anywhere in the world. Uh, it's not modeled, it's based on real data. They explained it, I don't get it. We have not modeled the Earth. We so. <laughs> I don't know that flight was a good or bad title. I know that it was not a flight sim title, and I know that that's what we're focused on creating this time around. Can I, like, shoot anything? No. So it's sunrise here in the morning of the event and I'm excited to be out here in Seattle. They haven't told us really anything. They're going to give us content that we can publish on the 30th. So I'm planning to finish this video on the 30th and publish it right when I'm allowed to. So that's the hotel they put me in and check this out. Jets. Right there. If you're new to the channel, it's mostly real flying content that I make but I will start getting into a little bit more sim stuff. I think it definitely applies. Is everybody signing our NDAs. Yeah, that's me. Yes. I'll give you mine, if you mine. Good morning. How are you doing? Shine that up just for you. Yeah, thanks. It was shiny, got a good reflection in it. Hang on, here we go. This, this, is, this is how we all get on in the media interviews. All the things that we cannot talk about. <laughs> Thank you all for coming again for this open um, conversation and Q&A. So everybody's out here vlogging. So I've had about two hours or so hands-on with the sim and can't show you anything. They're gonna give us B-roll, which I guess I'll intercut into this. Hopefully it's demonstrating what I'm gonna talk about. Um, I got to take a picture of my little station they gave me, but I couldn't show the monitor in the station, so I put the thumbs up in the way to block it. Uh, it's pretty impressive scenery. Like, I've never seen anything like this. I don't completely understand the technology. They explained it in the presentation that we weren't allowed to film. <laughs> it's petabytes of data that they're accessing to get real satellite imagery combined with mapping and scanning data. They're not rendering scenery, it's like, they're not, they're not modeling scenery, it's actually rendered based on real data. So I'm a real pilot and I have a very little bit of sim experience, but I've been using it for instrument training recently. I've never seen a simulator be much good for VFR until I saw that. Mm. So I don't understand the technology, like I went and flew around Toronto and it blew my mind. I turned on some rain, sunset, and went and did pattern work. So to be clear, those things are not modeled. It's like created based on data. It allows VFR flight. Yeah. And that's the big deal. That's You're the right. big deal. But what I'm saying is like the way it's created is not by being modeled. No. And this is the new. Oh yeah. Thing. Yes. So Can yes, you yeah, to me that? That we have not modeled the earth. We so. <laughs> yeah, 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 no, but you, you see, it, it, it's, it makes sense instantly when you say that. There is no way we can do this. Okay, so real quick, this is a disclaimer. I'm actually in Sweden right now, racing to finish this edit. I came straight here from Seattle. Uh, I actually was editing on the plane. So that's why I'm not even doing voiceovers. That's why I'm using this moment to put a disclaimer in to say this is not a paid promotion. Microsoft did not ask me to say anything specific about the product. They simply wanted me to not talk about it before the 30th of September, which was difficult for me because I knew that meant everyone else was gonna publish. So I'm trying to race to get that done while I'm here. Uh, I'm also gonna share some of the more raw, uncut interview stuff that I shot with the devs. I got some really great stuff and some of the B-roll that they sent me. That'll be on Patreon. Now, normally that's locked for supporters only, but I will leave it unlocked in this case because I know there's a lot of sim people that are gonna wanna see it. Uh, so that'll be in the cards up top there or in the description. The Patreon campaign is a huge reason why I'm able to continue making the content. So please uh, just promise me that you'll check the campaign if you go stop by. Anyways, back to the video, enjoy. You've met the four of us, uh, the five of us before. This is another key member of our team. This is the director of production at Microsoft, Robert Gerald. 
now fire away with questions. You mentioned that it's coming yet that this whole prototype was set for a HoloLens tech demo. So are we going to expect to see VR coming? I, I would say we can't commit to anything at this point in time. Um, I, when we discuss it, it's there's simple VR and then there's good good VR implementations and you can slap something in cheaply and easily. Um, but is that the right thing? We hold ourselves to like a really high bar. And uh, yeah, that takes time. The weather was unbelievable. I set up a rain scene, sort of a dusk. And that was cool too. You can slide the slider and in real time, like the light just changes while you're flying along and you know, the time of day and you can add clouds. And I mean, that's the other thing too. The clouds are not based on little 2D sprites or whatever. It's it's particles and so on. It, it's it's really incredible. Volumetric sort of crazy stuff, real time light tracing, uh, shadows, clouds make shadows onto clouds and then onto the ground. So it's it's off the charts. I mean, it's it's it looks amazing, no question. So the weather is not only beautiful or realistic; it also informed the flight model and the the, the, the aerodynamism. Flight model. Hard to judge because we're using the uh, crappy same Logitech yoke that I've got at home, which I don't love. So I can't say with great certainty how good the flight model is. The technology they talked about behind it is pretty impressive. There's all kinds of different data points. You can stall the wing at different places so it will drop a wing accurately. And then I guess with flight model, tell me about the number of surfaces that you were just saying. Like previously, what would it have been? It was not even the One. same system. One. So each surface contributes to the full aerodynamics. And so that's what we wanted to recreate, right? We wanted to find a system where it's not um, a, simplif a very simplified, like for example, just the center or something where you hard code. We wanted it to natively be the, as much as possible each surface. So the, the, it's a little bit over a thousand surfaces that we use. Basically the goal was to catch the airflow onto the plane as realistically as possible. So in real life, the, the wing is, you know, it's, it, the lift up is carried out like by each particle, right? Mm -hmm. each, each molecule of air is actually going over the, the aircraft and lifting the plane. So it's, it's like the whole surface, the whole surface of the wing is lifting, even the fuselage is lifting a bit. When in the Sebastian presentation, what I like is when he explained that, for example, if, you, if your plane does this, <laughs> one of the two wings basically slows down. That's, uh, that's real, that's and, how it and, is. And that's, all of that is calculated and all of that makes you potentially a better pilot because you can experience things you don't want in real life to happen like you know yeah. the, the last uh, killing spin yeah. this type of things is now really accurately um, simulated in, in, in the scene that's just but but that was the number which was what we needed to cover the wing like from the top from below from the front so you said that like it's nothing but previously it's one it was just, just one and yeah. we just use code to simulate yeah. the idea yeah exactly so this is literally a thousand times more sampling or whatever it's over the, so each um, of these surfaces yeah. does now a uh, aerodynamic simulation which is more complex than the whole plane of FSX. Like it's more uh, c computations um, because we compute um, like the basic track and lift. Mm -hmm. But there's such things like if the air which is coming in is rotating, it's going to drag the surface with it, right? Yeah. Like if you have a ball and it's in a tornado, the ball is going to start spinning, right? because the air around it spins, right? It, it takes it with you. So the calculation takes the incoming air, like speed, uh, direction, but moment. And this applies to the surface. Um, and so it can be very complex, right? And this is how we get this buffeting install because we calculate the full aerodynamics of the air on each surface, including, you know, when air goes over the surface, it can attach, that's when you get lift, but uh, if you like basically, if you bend it too much, it's going to detach, right. right? But if you look at experiments on how the stall happens, it's not like an on-off stage. You're not like either stalled or not stalled. It happens like over time. Yeah, and yeah. even when you fly, you probably notice some planes, they sort of don't want to stall. Right. And so we simulate the stall, dynamic stall on each surface. And that's why if you, depending on what your plane does, P factor, weight, it can stall on the left, on the right, on the middle. It can be really complex. I did go do slow flight stalls and spins in a 172 and it felt very real in terms of the way it buffeted, dropped a wing and I held it into a spin for three rotations and recovered. And it really felt quite real the way it reacted. So, you know, with the limited feedback I could get out of those controls, the software does seem to be very impressive from a flight model perspective. I mean, the first obsession I had was like the final turn 
before you go into final. You know, there's always this thing where sometimes people overshoot, they kick too much, That's and then the they go into the... Yeah. I wanted to get this, right? This to happen, and and this is the first thing we sort of pursued, and we actually need to do all this for this to work, right? Now, if you go too slow and finally you overshoot, you go, you kick, you, you will fall into, fall into the trees, right? So all in all, it's very impressive. Um, I can't really complain about anything from what I've seen. Didn't do any IFR stuff or procedures. Uh, that's not ready yet, I don't think. Question for Microsoft. This one might be painful, sorry. You quite famously ditched FSX. You sold the entertainment license, ESP when I was Lockheed Martin. Now you're back. Why are you back? I thought it wasn't profitable. We want to be accountable for, for the things that we can be, but we owe it to the consumer, I think, to do right this time, because we can't fix what we should have done right last time. I don't know that flight was a good or bad title. I know that it was not a flight sim title. And I know that that's what we're focused on creating this time around. I would say I'm not sitting in this chair if I thought we were going to not be here in a year. My dream is to have everything ready at the get-go, but you guys all realize that's just not going to happen. But we're trying to do everything that we can to build a good base. Let's give you the world, the weather. Let's give you the right aircraft, the right conditions to fly in and let's build, keep building on that. And when you guys tell us we're getting things right, then I think it's the next step is, let's talk about what we bring next, whether it's helicopters, whether it's fighter jets, we are doing big and small jets to answer your question. I think for us, accuracy, realism, quality, like they talked about this morning, to me on the development side, it's collaboration, transparency, and commitment, and then follow through. Like, if you want to fly, we want to help you fly. If your flight experience is inexperienced, or it's a lot of experience, I don't want inexperienced pilots to feel like this is not for me. But we're not really making it for them. We want it to be accessible, but I'm not making it for the guy with the Xbox controller. But I don't think we drive that point home hard enough for the people that we owe it to, which is the simulator folks. This literally is for you. And so we gotta get this right with you guys first, and by you guys I mean the people that really have been propping up this thing for the past 35 years. And then let's make it accessible to everybody else. So I want to make sure that we are saying this, hey, we're, we're going to make it accessible, we're not dumbing it down. Because I think that's, that's something that people are sensitive to, and we want to be sensitive to that. So either it's photogrammetric data, yeah. or uh, the data is not as perfect, and we augment what we, what we have, which is basically at the base level, it's uh, aerial uh, images that we augment on top of it. But you're not doing that manually, that's happening some sort of... Oh yeah, yeah. No, no way we can do it manually. So this is what I'm saying, so is, this has never been done before where it's data mm. taken to the simulator. Mm. So how, what do you call this, is this procedural, what is the word? The augmented... Yeah, we call that augmenting bit ma Bing yeah. Maps, yeah. And what is the, you said how many petabytes is it? Two petabytes of Bing Maps data is uh, being streamed. And it's made out of uh, those 3D scans, the aerial imagery, and the elevation data. Say that one more time because that's crazy. I want to make sure I have that clean. <laughs> Two petabytes. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just about the the the, the beam data uh -huh. because yeah. uh, the output in 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 the scene yeah. is actually even technically, <laughs> I would say, bigger than this because yeah, it's just about the data. Because as we augment we augment Bing, at the end the final output goes even beyond that. Yeah, so uh, the, it's the kind of the magic of procedural is you can make things that if you had them non-procedural would be enormous in size, but because it's procedural it's actually a program generated stuff on the fly. Like when you ask the sim, hey go generate this particular zone, then it can generate the stuff that's needed here without needing to store it. And you said how many miles of visibility? Uh, so that was really for the sky that we gave a number of 600 uh, kilometers. For just for the clouds? But yeah. then for, for uh, so re really for the Earth? For the ground itself, I don't for, know. For the Earth, actually, it's up to the horizon. If you take a point in space, you have XYZ coordinates. And uh, your plane is at an XYZ coordinate. And in that case, that XYZ coordinate is with uh, six, uh, 6 million meters. Uh, well, the radius of the Earth, so and the whole world is uh, in this virtual space, which means that from there you, we might as well uh, teleport to some other place and still be in the same coordinate space. So uh, the uh, <laughs> everything is represented. Uh, maybe it's a bit too technical, but it, it was great. But yeah, yeah. I'm gonna use that okay, and yeah. say I, I have no idea what he said, but <laughs> it's never been done before. I think is what we're getting at, right? It's never been. Yeah, just stick to that. <laughs> this has never been done before. But we need to be humble because, again, keep in mind we are, you know, on top of something that has been built previously by all who are 
the predecessor who has worked on Flight Simulator franchise? Yeah, you know, I think a lot of people, you're probably not going to like this answer, but I'll give it to you anyways. That's fine. Uh, I think a lot of people on the team and also in the Xbox org understand flight. You know, there are many titles that I've worked on and seen other people work on in the industry where maybe they didn't, they didn't hit the right note with the consumer that we were trying to hit. That's a good learning process for us. Which is why we're doing a lot of collaboration, or I hope we are doing a lot of collaboration with the community. Because I think there are always opportunities for us to get better. Uh, the E3 event for us was hard. Yeah. And it was hard for the reason you just mentioned, because we felt like we have a, 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 an accountability to the flight sim community. And the message that came out initially was one that we really took hard uh, because we understood that it made people feel in the flight sim community specifically that hey we're making an xbox game that's all about the controller at an xbox you know event showing once again that we're tone deaf and that's something that we uh that we're aware of so i'm pretty impressed with how transparent they were clearly they care about the flight sim community this is not flight it's not an xbox game and it's going to be multi-core supported which I know most sims weren't up until now. Um, VR is probably coming. It looks great. It flies fairly impressively. Again, I couldn't confirm it because of the way the controls were, but I think with better controls, we have a pretty cool software engine for this thing. Uh, there will be longer version of the interviews and the B-roll that I didn't use on Patreon, like I said, uh, link in the description and the cards. And uh, if you're new, uh, please check out some of the other stuff. Uh, a lot of real flying content on this channel. Just uh, here in my little apartment in Sweden, finishing this up, and I uh, hope you enjoyed it.